He said, the day you started calling me, I answered you. Daniel chapter 10. He said, but the prince of Persia stood on the way and withheld me 20 and one day. Because your prayers are responded to by angels. Angels are sent, they are dispatched in response to your prayers. Angels are the ones who run the errands on your prayer line. And there are conflicts in the heavenlies. So forces of evil also stand to confront them. And in the days of Daniel, he said, he stood on the way and withheld me 20 and one days. When they were taking register in heaven, they discover one angel is here to return. Where is he? Then the search party went. And he said, we saw one demon there. Oh, Michael, you have to move. And to move Michael, you need Michael doesn't move anyhow. You need what? Hallelujah. Yeah. Lift up those two hands and shout aloud, hallelujah. Yeah. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great thing he has done on the earth. Great thing unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great thing he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory. Somebody lift your voice and say to him, All to the Lord, be the glory, great things he has All to the Lord, be the glory, great things he has Say it again, all to the Lord, be the glory, great things he has Tell him unto the Lord, unto the Lord, be the glory, great things he has done, unto the Lord, be the glory, great things he has done. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning. For your majestic presence in our midst that is proved again and again. Thank you and thank you and thank you. Let today be a day to be much remembered in the life of all your people. Give each one here today an encounter of a lifetime. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please take your seat. This is a very unique week for us in this ministry. God is a God of times and seasons. The birth of the liberation mandate, which is being commemorated this week, will mark your long-awaited liberation at last. I saw multitudes of men crying wailing and agonizing for rescue. I saw them all on a roll. The cry was so bitter. I was moved with compassion and began to cry with them. And the Lord said to me, while I was questioning, but why, Lord? He said, but from the beginning it was not so. You are not meant for tears. Therefore, this liberation week shall mark the end of every private tear in your life. I saw them battered, beaten, broken, tattered, miserable. And he said, but from the beginning, it was not so. 
I saw them deform. I saw hands like this. I saw faces with contours. I saw them in rags. I saw them insane. And he said, but from the beginning, it was not so. Whatever looks like you in that picture, he said, that is not my intention for you. Whatever is contrary to human dignity around your life, he said, that's not my intention. That's not my desire. That is the corruption of the devil. He said, but from the beginning, it was not so. Therefore, this week is not like any other week. It's a very sensitive week. The liberation week is always a week of very strange visitations in our ministry. Therefore, I want to appeal to you, create time to be part of the spiritual preparation and be part of the actual visitation. It's all beginning on Wednesday and we are preparing the way of the Lord to connect with our rewards in God. Isaiah 62 verse 10 to 12. He said, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight, lift up his standard for the people. For the Lord is coming with his reward in his hand. And God told me, he said, it is time, it is time to bless his people for they are due for his rewards. He said, the time to favor you has finally come. And I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, because you take pleasure in the stones of Zion and you favor the very dust thereof. You need to be here on Saturday morning and see the army of sanctuary keepers. Even with their children, the children that come with them are also cleaning with them. You need to wake up early in the morning and see the traffic control people. You need to be here and see the drivers who sleep in the night and wake up at 4 a.m. to hit the road. Volunteer drivers. Some are 60 years plus. Who chose to serve God in that category? You need to see what the giving grace of God on this ministry is. It is not matchable anywhere in the world. That's why God said it is your turn at last to be blessed. Our army of pastors, you find them in the hospital at 12 midnight, at 1 a.m., running after the well-being of people. The satellite fellowship ministers, day and night on call, 24 hours every day. God is saying, the time, the set time to reward you has finally come. Yeah. And when you are preparing for his reward, you get yourself properly set. That Isaiah 62 verse 10 to 12, Say, you better prepare the way of the Lord is coming with his reward in his hand. Prepare, prepare, get ready. So we are waiting on the Lord in our ministry worldwide, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And you break your fast before you come into the liberation night at 10 p.m. It's going to be a night when God will further validate that this liberation mandate came out of heaven. And I know that your package will not be lost to any form of carelessness. <laughs> On the wings of prayer, part six. Thank you, Father. On the wings of prayer, part six. We'll be focusing in this session on the power of prayer and fasting. The power of prayer and fasting.
And I'll read for my text Isaiah chapter 58. Thank you, Jesus. We are breaking the head of Satan this morning. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 58. And I'll read from verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So fasting is a prescription of the almighty God. Fasting is not the, a doctrine of a church. Is a prescription of the almighty God. And the benefits are listed in this same chapter. Is this not the fact that I have chosen to lose the bounds of wickedness? To undo the heavy burden and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke? Is this not the reason why I have recommended fasting for you? For the breaking of every yoke, and that means everything holding you bound, everything tying you down, everything holding you captive. Is this not the reason? I'm not out to punish you, I'm showing you the way to polish you. Is it not to dip a bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou clothed him? And that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? And verse 8 Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward then shalt thou call verse 9 and the Lord shall answer thou shalt cry and he shall say here I am if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speak in vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness as the noonday. Verse 11 And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt see, raise up the foundation of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of paths to walk on. Now verse 14. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord and I will cause thee to ride upon thy high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This passage of scripture clearly defines the tangible benefits of prayer and fasting. It's important for us to mention at this point that fasting is a spiritual catalyst in prayer. Fasting is a spiritual catalyst in prayer. It enhances the potency of our prayer life. It enhances the potency of our prayers.
It enhances the rate of effect of our prayer life. Hear what he said. Then shall thou call, verse 9, and the Lord shall answer. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. There are some questions, therefore, that may not receive answers without prayer that is reinforced with fasting. Then shall thou call, and the Lord will answer. Then I have chosen fasting to get you into the realm of answers to difficult questions. I'd like you to understand this. And thou shalt cry, and the Lord shall say, Here am I. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Then shalt thou call. I also want us to understand, please, that fasting is a covenant obligation. Matthew 6, verse 16. When thou fastest, not if thou fastest, when. When thou fastest. Moreover, when thou fastest. Then verse 17. But when thou but thou, when thou fasted, so it's a when issue, it's not an if. There is no gift of fasting. It's a commandment that is designed to put you in command over the affairs of life. When thou fasted, and just like Esau lost his birthright to red pottage, many believers have lost their birthright to uncontrollable appetite and chew, chew, chew 24 hours of the day. My grandmother kept a lot of local birds, you know, poultry. There is no time you throw food and they don't eat. You can't hear poultry say, I'm, I'm, I'm full. <laughs> Amen. Anytime you throw the grains, actually. If you throw it down 25 hours a day, there is no day the poultry ball will say, I'm full. There are too many poultry like people in the body of Christ. <laughs> Biscuit today, peppermint, chewing gum. It has become so wonderful among the charismatics that even in church, not in our church, they don't do it, crowd control will pick you. <laughs> in church, in most nations of the world. I mean, to sit down in church, people have become so indisciplined that you have to be moving your mouth with chewing gum to stay in church. Now, the same people. Sitting down in an interview place, they will never move their mouth. Or can you be moving your mouth in an interview? They say, what's your name? My name. They will send police to pick you. Amen. That is the level of indiscipline in the body of Christ. Then shall thou call, and the Lord will answer. There are many answers you may never get. You know, not because God does not want to hear. The opposition is stronger than the words who are speaking. You know, Jesus said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayers and fasting. This kind, there are some, most of us are confronted with those kinds. They stood on the way of your prayer, like the Prince of Persia. No way. And then it takes fasting to move them. He said, this kind won't move no matter how many grammar you speak. This kind will not move. Quote from Genesis to Revelation. This kind won't move except by prayer and fasting. You know what the disciples said? Why could we not cast him out? He said, because of your own belief. If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you move this one. But this kind that you are, moved, I'm asked, you are confronted with, he won't hear your faith. 
your faith must be reinforced with fasting for you to answer this kind. And that is the highest kind recorded in scriptures. And that is the kind standing on the way of many people here. Eat in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. Even the day of general fasting in church, the trouble, when it's getting to 11, the eyes are already turning. <laughs> 11 a.m. And this is the kind standing on his way. You know what the Lord said to Daniel? Daniel, a man of sanctified lifestyle. He said, the day you started calling me, I answered you. Daniel chapter 10. He said, but the prince of Persia stood on the way and withheld me 20 and 1 days. Because your prayers are responded to by angels. Angels are sent, they are dispatched in response to your prayers. Angels are the ones who run the errands on your prayer line. And there are conflicts in the heavenlies. So forces of evil also stand to confront them. And in the days of Daniel, he said, he stood on the way out with help me 20 and 1 days. When they were taking register in heaven, they discover one angel is here to return. Where is he? Then the search party went. And he said, we saw one demon there. Oh, Michael, you have to move. And to move Michael, you need fasting. Michael doesn't move anyhow. You need what? You need fasting. When chief of army staff is going to the an army formation, don't they fast? They have to fast to prepare for him. They clean up everywhere. He's the chief. When you are calling for this chief, there's a preparation to get him. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You may not like it, but that's the truth. You know, the drugs that help your body, you are commanded how to use it. I was a victim of tuberculosis. There was one kind of drug I hate the color forever. If you give me the color of that shirt, I won't wear it. That is many, many years ago, when you take that liquid, your entire body, the cells in your brain, your skull, everything, it shakes you from top to bottom. Yeah, it didn't heal me. You know, they say truth is bitter. You need to wake up to the realities of the demand for fasting or the 21 days may become 40 years. You don't have to. This kind. Matthew 17 verse 21. Go out not out but by prayers and by fasting. This kind. Go out not out but by prayer and and fasting is an issue of when, not if. What are the benefits of fasting? One, fasting is a spiritual device for spirit supernatural empowerment it's for your supernatural empowerment it's a means through which you are empowered supernaturally jesus went on a fast and the bible said in luke chapter 4 verse 14 after the 40 days he returned in the power of the Spirit into the Luke 14, 14. And there went out a fame of him through all the regions round about. He returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there was a breaking forth into his destiny. In Psalm 63 and verse 1 to 3. Oh Lord my God, Ale will I seek thee. That's what we read at the onset of this service. My soul thirsted for thee, O Lord, and my flesh longeth. That's fasting. My flesh is stretched. 
My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. For what? To see thy power and thy glory as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. So to see his power, there is a longing of your flesh. There is a requirement for the longing of your flesh. Amen. Amen. My flesh longed for thee. That's number one benefit of prayer and fasting. And that is the way yokes are destroyed. Amen. Amen. Number two benefit of fasting. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Isaiah 58 verse 8. Fasting and prayers empowers the breaking forth of light from heaven in your life. I mean striking revelations. What do I call it? Call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Striking revelations. Borrowed revelation is the reason for many people's frustration. Borrowed revelation. It is what somebody said, not what you had. When you hear from heaven, the world must hear you. When you hear from heaven, Satan must hear you. When you hear from heaven, situations must hear you. When you hear from heaven, opposition must hear you. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Then shall thy light break forth. In 1977, I desperately wanted an experience with Pentecost. So I took the Acts of the Apostles. And I was on a seventh day hanging around with God. And I was reading it so slowly that by the fifth day I was still on chapter 13. Can you imagine the reading? Lord, show me the power behind the acts of the apostles. By the fifth day, I couldn't lay on the bed anymore. I'd been overwhelmed with the glory from heaven. I took off to visit some of my friends just to change my location. And they said, oh, Brother David, why don't you come in and eat? I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not eating. They said, can you bless the food? They made the worst mistake of their life. As I opened my mouth to bless the food, I can't tell what I say. But by the time I was through blessing the food, it was already about 1 a.m. <laughs> Everybody broke loose into prayers that I can't tell what they are praying about. I went back to my room. Something moved on me. You see, you don't need to be a preacher to seek God. I was no preacher. I had no calling to no ministry. I wasn't thinking ministry. I told one of my sons yesterday, I said, hey, you know, God called Abraham my servant. Abraham was a businessman. You know, Job was a business baron. Does Job serve you for naught? Has thou not blessed him? Blessed his house? And blessed the work of his hand? He was a servant of God. You don't need to be a full-time minister to be a servant of God. It's your heart and your work with God that makes you one. David was a king and he called him a prophet. Acts chapter 2 verse 29. And he being a prophet. And saying afar off. He was a prophet as a king. I was seeking God for the power behind the acts of the apostles. I mean the thing came on me. 
It came heavy on me in 77. This is 2008, 31 years ago. Then shall thy life break forth as the morning. 1981, I was with God and having some nice time with him five days. And then light came and that light shattered every thought and tendency of indebtedness. And I took my pen and wrote down those fantastic things. That there's a breaking fall that comes in the realm of fasting. 1982, I encountered the light of heaven on prosperity. Can you see it here now? 1982, three days only. I don't know why you're going to waste your destiny all, all through. Three days only. I said, God, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. You see, your questions have not received answers because there's opposition against the answer. You need fasting to break the opposition. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Here is what the word says. He said, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. So he is against you assessing the light. Because until you assess the light, darkness continues to have dominion. So for you to assess the light, wait on God. No matter how hard they show you, you may not see it. Wait on God. There's a breaking forth of light. Say with me, breaking forth. Breaking Glory to God. Breaking forth of light. There's a breaking forth of light. I was up with God on the mountain praying, and when I came back, three days, fasting and praying, and he said, hey, on the third day, behold, I've touched your tongue with the coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you say, you see. It's not a quotation you have drawn from a book. It's a word from the Lord. After you have broken forth into that realm. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Christianity is no form fear, it's warfare. If there were no enemy on the line, all your prayers will receive automatic answers. But I say block it of the principles and powers. Say no way. No, no. He must not get a job. No, he must not have peace in his family. No, he must not have this. And you start a building. Five years, one block. Ten years, two layers. Ten layers. He said this kind that is resisting you go ahead not out. But what? By prayer. By prayer I'm fasting. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Is there any week on this earth I don't fast? I can't tell. Wake up! You can't use my eyes to see. No matter the commitment of your guide, it won't be like having your own eyesight. Can you bring a blind man here now and say, look, let me explain how this hall looks like to you in details there are three arms long they're long how long 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 he can't capture it then there are three short arms short short you need your own eyes to see the commitment of your guide will not be a substitute for your sight then shall thy light break forth. That's the morning. I knew I was going to prosper beyond measure before I met you. So you were not part of my consideration. When I saw my prosperity, I didn't know you. I saw it and I was walking in the reality of what I saw without having to touch it. Even the devil knows I'm prosperous. All my enemies agree he's prosperous. Leave him alone. When I kept saying I cannot be sick, they said, stop that. Nonsense. You cannot be sick. What? Okay, am I sick now? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Then shall thy light, your light, your own light, not the one you borrow, your own light shall break forth as the morning. 
I think I've marketed fast enough. We can close now. Amen. If you like, go and do it. If you don't like, don't do it. It's not about God, come and do something. No. God, come and show me what I need to do. He shows you when you call upon him. Then shall you call and the Lord will answer. Why? You are asking him a question. I have done all I know. Lord, what must I do next? Then your light breaks forth. My son, my daughter, this is what to do. Number three. Break him forth of your light. And then, then shall your head spring forth speedily. Huh? Do you know every sickness and oppression of the devil? There are those devils who won't go except by prayer and fasting. When Jesus came in his healing ministry, he said he went about healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Even the fever that Peter's mother-in-law had, it was an oppression of the devil. There was a fever. fever. You think it's mosquito. It's a lie. <laughs> Are you the only one that mosquito beat? No. We were in a meeting many years ago in Patiji, and then mosquitoes in that place... They are anointed mosquitoes. <laughs> so, now we were camping in a church building. And the mosquitoes, they move about like flies. And I lay on this bench, and then all the mosquitoes, when they come to where I lay, they move physically. And they go to the other people. And I said, can you see? <laughs> Even mosquitoes have sense. <laughs> mosquitoes have what? It was such a bad situation that people were arranging benches to be close to the ceiling fan. Are you following? And then we were laying down like this, and mosquitoes came and they were just moving to the other direction. As they come here, they just move. This is not a man to touch, just move to the other side. There is a clothing on your life that exempts you. I tell you something. Then shall your health spring forth speedily. Instead of waiting for doctors to put you on a fast, Engage in the spiritual fast. Amen. Amen. Or you don't know when they give you drip. It's fasting. Or you don't know it's fasting. I always tell them humorously, why don't you give this man to drink and rest? <laughs> A whole man, you lay him down and say, this will just be dripping like that one in one minute. And then eight hours, the man just put his hand like that. Give him to drink so he can go to his work. That's a medical fast. But you can engage spiritual fast to cause your head to spring forth what? Speedily. Because it's an oppression of the devil. And it may be a kind that does not go, but by prayer and fasting. So fast it off. Satan, come on now. I'm ready to break every yoke. Your hold on me. What's time in that? Now get up. So this coming three days is your day. Can I hear your amen? When doctors give you prescription, you run after it. Now God is giving you his own. Do what you please with it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Then shall your health spring forth speedily. There's a springing forth of your health. Amen. And now we talk about the same verse, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. In Zechariah chapter 3, we were told of the story of Joshua the high priest standing before the Lord and Satan standing on his right side to resist him. And how did he do that? He placed a filthy garment on him. And God spoke, is this not a brand plugged out of fire? See how the devil is trying to molest this destiny. Take off that filthy garment from him. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, Satan was standing on his right hand to resist him. You won't walk into the fullness of God's plan for your sanctification. 
I will keep you in this filthiness. You are not going to break forth. And then you keep eating 24 hours a day. You say, yes, that's good for you. I'll keep you like that. There are many things you hate and you find yourself doing. It's because there is a force standing on your right side to resist you. And in case that is a kind that goeth not out but by prayer and fasting, you remain there until you come on the line of your liberty in prayers and fasting. Can I hear your amen? amen. Some fellows will wake up and just start hitting their wife. Bah, bah. And after that, they will look bold outside. They enter their room and they start crying. How long will I do this? What's happening? There's a Satan resisting you at your careless hour. It's a hitter. It's a, Hey, hey, hey. And after he tells he said, Why am I a Christian? What is all this for me? <laughs> Satan standing to resist you, and that kind goeth not out but by prayers and by fasting. You find yourself lying for nothing. There is nothing you are going to gain by telling that lie. You still tell the lie to erode your dignity. Satan standing to resist you by forcing on you a filthy garment. Huh? And he said, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and by fasting. I'd like you to use these three days as your own era of liberation at last. Whatever you don't want, confront it with the weaponry of prayer and fasting. Get on, head on into it and say, no, I take it no more. There is no higher kind than what prayer and fasting can deal with. Amen. Number three, it destroys the hold. Number four, the hold of sin on your life. Call it by his name. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Righteousness is not in talking, it's in doing. Righteousness is not in talking, it's in doing. How can you be stealing and say, I'm the righteous one of God and graduate? Is God the thief? Don't let the devil confuse you. There is no theoretical righteousness. Righteousness is either practical or it does not exist. Can you behead someone and say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, I'm not a murderer. It has, it's my righteousness. Mm -mm. They will show you in the prison that that's no righteousness. How many can see are breaking forth this week in their lives. Amen. Number five. What is fasting? What are the benefits of fasting? Number five. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. Verse 11. The Lord shall guide you continually. Divine guidance, Ezra chapter 3 and verse 21 to 23. They asked the Lord to show them the right way to go. And the Lord answered them. So you locate his direction for your life. Ezra chapter 8 and verse 21 to 23. It shows you the right way to go. You are going to make it. <laughs> Thou will show me the path of life in your presence. It's fullness of joy. On your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Psalm 16, verse 11. So you locate his direction for your life through prayer and fasting. The Lord shall guide thee continually. Continually, continually, continually shall guide thee continually. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Verse 12. Talks about and they that shall be of thee 
shall raise the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of pastor dwelling. Then shalt thou, verse 14, delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon your high places, the, upon the high place of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Say with me, supernatural breakthroughs. You join 12 and 13, I mean 12 and 14, it clearly paints the picture of supernatural breakthrough. Verse 12 said, you'll be a pace setter, a repairer of the bridge, a restorer of paths to work in. Repairer of the bridge, a restorer of paths to work in. And verse 14 said, then you will ride upon your high places and you connect with your heritage in God. Supernatural breakthrough. So let's put it this way. Number six, it is your spiritual access to your contested heritage. Your inheritance is being contested and you are breaking forth into it through prayer and fasting. And when that happens, number seven, it is the guarantee for your desired supernatural breakthroughs in all areas of your life. Having said this, when God's choice becomes your choice, then you gain command. Fasting is God's choice for your desired breakthrough. Is this not the fast? that I have chosen that is God's choice and when God's choice becomes your choice you gain supernatural command rise to your feet everybody somebody blessed this morning come on shout hallelujah amen nobody in this church is permitted to miss Wednesday Thursday and Friday. If you like travel to Japan, wait on God on Wednesday. If you like go to Australia, you are waiting on God on Wednesday. Don't say time has changed. Use the time there. <laughs> Can I hear your amen? amen? Praise the Lord. <laughs> How many have some questions that are yet to receive answers? Some questions. You have some questions that are yet to receive answer. This week shall be a week of answers for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You never come across any man on this earth that carries his glory without the price of fasting. You check it. You can find many noisemakers. Shout, yeah! Ooh, ah. Those are no substitutes for his glory, amen. Any ministry, any Christian that visibly carries his glory is paying the secret price of fasting to see your power and your glory. There is a demand of fasting on my life. Can't see that. I waited on the Lord one time, and on the third day of my waiting on the Lord, I went somewhere to preach. I can't tell how I arrived at the back of the building from the altar. And I, I found myself on the back. And when I turned, I saw all of them backing me. I said, how did I get here? You can't see his glory. I was in a meeting in the Baden. The Baden Polytechnic were having a convention there. I was invited to be one of the speakers. I, as I was speaking, on the seven keys to supernatural breakthrough, somebody was possessed by an evil spirit and from the gallery just landed. Why? You want to see his glory? That's the price. His fasting is not for those who don't have food to eat. It's for those who have the food and ignore it. And say, I'm going for God. I'm going for God. How many can see something happening to them this week? Amen. 
This one is not spiritual week of emphasis, so it's encounter week of emphasis. What do I call it? Encounter week of emphasis. Every habit in your life that is tormenting your destiny, they must go this week. Every spiritual ignorance that is afflicting your destiny, the light of heaven must come in that place this week. You know this week marks the end of your struggle with sickness and disease. Make three, these three days days of declaring spiritual war against the prince of Persia that is resisting the delivery of what belongs to you with God as sanction. It must come this time in the name of Jesus. Is somebody catching the fire what I'm talking about? <laughs> can I hear you say, this is my week? Come and say it now. The loudest you can, this is my week. This is my week. There are many things you are long over, overdue for. <laughs> and the Bible says, but this guy goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. In fact, for those of you who can afford it, particularly those of you in your own businesses, clear those three days and make your heaviest preparation. How can somebody be in China and be connecting with something you cannot connect with here? There's a force resisting your assets. If it means closing your shop for three days to open up your destiny, why not? I want to see many of you hang around this church for this three days period and say, God, won't you hear me? This thing standing on my way is enough. You must go. I want to be desperately violent. God told me, I'm bringing them into the fullness of the liberation mandate. God spoke to me very clearly. He said, the time for your change of story has finally come. And all we are doing is getting you ready to move in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So receive the grace required. Not just for doing without food. He said, then shall you call. Not then shall you wait for 6 p.m. to come. Then shall ye call. Most of you wait on the Lord just to support him in an hunger strike. No prayer, no communication. It was only 6 o'clock. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 6 o'clock. In our church, we wait on God on Wednesday, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, we eat. No prayer, no nothing, no searching. This week must not be like that for you. Can I hear your amen? amen? The doors of this tabernacle will remain open from Wednesday. So you want to pray, you come in to pray, you want to shout to the Lord, you come in to shout to the Lord, and just get yourself out once and for all. What each three days has done for me, they are unfathomable. Unfathomable. After two days, will he revive us? And on the third day, he will raise us up. God runs a three-day consolidated, concentrated program. When you engage in it, there's a break and forth. I know this week must be a week to be much remembered in your life. This is an extraordinary week for you. How many agree with that with the Holy Ghost? This week is a week of answers for you. This is a week of answers for you. This is a turnaround week for us in this ministry. To all our internet worshippers across the nations of the earth, this is a unique week. The same prescription at this center is the one that God is giving to you. You are all waiting on the Lord in China, United Arab Emirates. Wherever you are located, you are waiting on the Lord three days this week, mandatory, compulsory for your breakthrough. And you are not going to miss it in the name of Jesus. No one in this church is permitted to miss those three days. Travel to anywhere. Fasting doesn't travel. Travel with it. Amen. Can I hear your amen? You travel with it and you pray. You don't just wait for 6 p.m., you pray. You are not waiting on the time. You are waiting on the Lord. You pray. 
You pray. Now lift up those two hands and pray in the spirit for a minute. Come on. Receive grace right now. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Zekarite Sengleri da Yetazo. Yatekere de Zizoro do Bombari. Yakusharade. Yakusharade de Zobarada Zigaro. Yatokoro de Zara. Yekoro do Burade. Yakarada Sure. Yekorida. Yatekarida Zelote. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that this week shall be a week of liberation for you indeed. This week is declared a week of liberation for your family. This week is declared a week of liberation for your health. This week is declared a week of liberation for your children. This is declared a week of liberation for your marriage. This is declared a week of liberation for your destiny. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Reko Shabaki Tasulo Brekena Yeshoda Radezo Bakaredo Makata Katuke Rupe Keretenga Yakure de Segleria Mepara Yeshanda Garuke Nekandezo Baradankayo Shagaride Edito Prekenetezi Yora Baradezo Reko Tabarido Yakoreke Nentezo Hallelujah Thank you Lord In Jesus' precious name. I'd like you to just organize a spiritual camping for yourself in the spirit. Even when you go to work, spend time in the night and camp with God. I can see the cloud. The cloud is filled with amazing, strange order of deliveries. The cloud is loaded in your favor. This is not a week to mess around. It's a week to maximize. This is not a week to mess around. It's a week to maximize. And as the Lord liveth, who called me 27 years ago, he will confirm his word of blessings on your life this time. Hear what I saw. Every child stays three months in the womb and then is born. The first nine years is gone. The second nine years is gone. The third nine years is here. Everyone is due for a triple dimension of delivery. That is, you are due for a triple encounter with destiny. Whatever has been withheld from you, you get it back three times over. He has stopped that child from coming three times. Now you are getting three of them at the same time. As the Lord liveth, even before the Friday night, your testimony has been released. So get around with the books and announce to you and any other material in your shelf that will help boost your standing strong in the place of prayer and fasting 
these three days. This is not regular or usual spiritual week of emphasis. It's encounter week of emphasis. You are desperate for an encounter, a turnaround encounter, and that's what we have. Shall we share the goodness together in fellowship? Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, brethren. I hope you have been blessed with that powerful teaching from our Father in the faith about the power of prayer and fasting. If truly you have been blessed, please like the video and share it to other platforms. Remain ever blessed.